we're going to derive the equation for the planes in space. How in the world are we going to find an equation of this particular plane, P? What is the equation for that? Well, uh, one of the ways that we could do this is uh, if we had a normal vector n right here, and let's call this point P0. And this particular P0 is x0, y0, and z0. And let us say that there's a point P here, and that particular point is defined to be x, y, and z. If you draw a vector this way, uh, then between any these two vectors, it will create this relationship that's perpendicular because we just defined the vector n, which is ABC, as normal to this plane. Now, this point P is a generic point, any point along this plane. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. It doesn't matter, it's all over the place. And no matter where that point is, it will always create that relationship. Starting from the initial point P0 to that some point in this plane, whatever that vector is, it will always be perpendicular. So we're going to utilize that relationship. And that relationship is that the dot product, if they are perpendicular, should be equal to zero. So the dot product of the normal vector n and the dot product over here should equal to zero. Well, n is defined to be ABC. And the vector P not P is starting at P, it goes to P naught, I'm sorry. So we're looking for the vector p not p, and you gotta be careful that you subtract the values from the tip from the beginning. So it's x minus x naught, not the other way around. That will change the direction. Okay? So uh, let us do this. It's just x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught is equal to zero. Okay, now that I've applied the dot product, I need to expand it out. Now that we expanded it out, we're going to call this portion right here D. So now we came up with the equation for the plane. So the equation of the plane is AX plus BY plus CZ plus D is equal to zero. That's right. That right there is the equation for the plane. Do you notice something interesting? The coefficients of the variable x, y, z is respectively a, b, c, which corresponds to the components of the vector, of normal vector n. That's the derivation. So let's move on, guys, to a problem. The first example that I'd like to go over is the following. Okay, guys, this is the first example. Find the equation of the plane through P0 that is perpendicular to a line. Now, instead of just tackling the problem right away, let's think about this for a second. Okay? We want to find some plane. Right? This is some plane right here, guys. Some plane. Let's call that plane Q. And there's a point 1, a P0, which is what? 1, 1, 1. And they're saying that there's another line that's perpendicular to that, right here. And that is this over here. And this could be broken down, and we could write that as So we broke down the vector equation r vector r into p naught 
and this is directional right here, m. So what that means is that this right here is a vector m. What we want is to find the equation over here, but we learned earlier, we learned earlier that the equation of the plane was indeed ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to 0. There's a normal vector over here that is parallel to this vector, which means that this vector will also be some multiple of 2, 1, 3. So this right here is 2, 1, 3. So in the previous example, there'll be n, right? So point P will be x, y, z. So plugging into the original setup, for me to achieve this right here will just be a dot product between that P naught P. Well, and we know what it is, which is a copy of the vector R, the directional portion of it, which is 2, 1, 3. And P naught P is essentially X minus 1, Y minus 1, and Z minus 1, which will give you, after applying the dot product, you, will, you have 2 times X minus 1 plus 1 times X minus 1 plus 3 times Z minus 1. You could get at this equation by simply using this right here, guys. A times X minus X naught plus B times Y minus Y naught plus C times Z minus Z naught is equal to 0. And D is essentially a minus of AX naught plus BY naught and CZ naught. So you could just start over here, but I just wanted to draw the picture over here so that you understand the basic idea behind this. So from now on, the mechanics, the, if you're doing the sheer mechanical portion of this, just start with this right here. That's all you need. All right? But I just wanted to start from the basics right here, the basic idea. So we expand that out, and what it comes out to is 2x plus y plus 3z. And then that comes out 2 minus 2 minus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0. And therefore, is 2x plus y plus 3z. And that gives you minus 6 is equal to 0. And you might be interested in graphing that. So how do you graph that? Um, harking back to how you grafted in the uh, Cartesian coordinate system, you do the same thing over here, guys. Essentially, this is a z, this is y, and this is x. If z was 0, you'll be dealing with xy plane. In the xy plane, we have 2x plus y, okay, let's write that up, in xy plane, which is that z is equal to 0, right? We would have the equation 2x plus y is equal to 6. Well, if you did that, we'll trace out the x intercept is equal to 3. So that'll be 1, 2, 3, right here. And the y intercept will be 6. So it'll be, that's about 3 here, and this is about 6 over here. Okay, that's about 6. So you will be tracing along this line right here, guys, like that, on an xy plane. And in a yz plane, that's when x is equal to 0. And what you'll end up with is y plus 3z is equal to 6. Well, we know that the y intercept is already 6, and z intercept is 2. 1, 2, right here. And it will trace out this particular uh, line in the x, y, sorry, y, z plane. So what do you do in the um, x, z plane? 
Well, here the y is equal to 0, isn't it? If you do that, plugging for 0, you end up with 2x plus 3z is equal to 6. And you merely confirm what we already know. The x in a step is already 3. The z in a step is already 2. You connect that. And do you see the triangular shape over here, guys? That is the trace of a plane in that one octant. You just imagine yourself, if you expand that particular triangle in all direction, that is the plane that we're dealing with, plane Q. So if you want to shorten this, uh, the even quicker version of this is to simply, using the information over here, find out what your x intercept, your y intercept, and your z intercept is, simply plugging for others remaining two variables as a zero, and you'll find the same exact intercepts here, here, and here. And connect those two things, you will end up with the triangle that represents a portion of the plane that cuts through the uh, that particular octant. So we're back. In example two, find a vector equation of the line that contains 2, 0, 1 and is perpendicular to the plane that's given. Now, before we jump in, into the mechanics of the things, just think about what it actually says. There is a plane over here. And let's call this plane, I don't know, R. So there's a plane R. It has an equation that you see here. And there's a point right here, not, not on the plane, which is 2, 0, 1. And we want it to be perpendicular right here, right? So all we need to find the vector equation for the line is the point, which we have. And But what is its directional vector? Well, that's kind of repetitive. What is its vector? That's what we want to know, A, B, C. But remember how the how this was defined, the plane? Its coefficients represents the ABC, the components of the perpendicular vector. Oh, so what that means is just by examining the plane, the equation of the plane, we know that the ABC must be 1, negative 2, and 3. And from that point on, we just simply apply let's call this a small r vector t in terms of t is simply p naught plus t times the directional vector. Well p naught was given to us 2, 0, 1. Now that we plug in for p naught and vector m, we combine it together to give the answer the linear equation of R is 2 plus t i plus negative 2 t j plus 1 plus 3 t k. And that's written in an algebraic vector. And that's right there. Yay.